welcome everybody who's going to be tuning in to chapter five part two with reclaiming the ground by ryan lestrange we'll wait till you guys get on and join the chat if you guys are watching from youtube um, and catching the replays you can catch the lives leave comments ask questions if at any point during this broadcast today you feel the unction by the holy spirit for deliverance for healing let me know in either the chat comment on youtube during the replay or or on this video but i welcome you tonight because tonight we're going to do part two of chapter five the power of words the power of your words the bible says that life and death are in the power of your tongue your words your words are a weapon used by the holy spirit used by god himself to break strongholds and not only to just break them but to create them okay the bible actually says in psalms 141 verse 3 set a guard over my mouth lord keep watch over the door of my lips keep watch over the door of my lips in the book of psalms he references your lips your speech as a door as a gateway so to speak into the kingdom realm because once it's released once it's decreed the kingdom realm operates off of verbiage okay and so verbiage can create strongholds create infirmities it can create curses but thanks to the cross to redemption of Jesus Christ the very name of Jesus in an anointed appointed person and God's children will break will break every chain that has been formed through verbiage Kathy Hepek hello Jeff hello welcome back I'm really excited for this broadcast tonight happy february 2nd 2022 how do you prophetic people like all of those twos two 2022 20, praise the lord adrian welcome back buddy nice to see you hello to you too the power of words chapter 5 part 2 we're going to be starting with page 58 if you have the book we're going to be starting with page 58 father god right now right now in the mighty name of jesus holy spirit we welcome you and this broadcast we thank you lord that the stone has been rolled away in the name of jesus we declare that our lord jesus rose from the dead on behalf of the saints we declare our victory we declare our inheritance we declare that we are seated at the right hand of the father in the name of jesus at the right hand with our lord amen positioned positioned in armor and in authority amen to stomp kingdom affairs through the power of the cross amen and so okay page 58 this is summed up i'm i'm, I'm giving you a little summary of page 58 the power of words remember that we are talking about tearing down evil altars in your home and regions and territory okay cleansing a home cleansing the regions you are being instructed through this book of how to do regional kingdom warfare on large level and small level all right the power of your words is the key to this okay you must have an understanding of what you carry because it will bring a blessing and it will be a curse okay true change in any area 
even within your family, okay, true change, friends, geographical area, the ways of the Lord must be established in the hearts of people. They must have an understanding, okay, that we have a God that forgives them of their sin, that forgives them of any ancestry sin, that will remove the curses, okay, and that he has redeemed them through the cross. To maintain change, there must be an understanding of finished work of the cross. For example, we have been in the, um, homes or even deliverances here in our, in our small church. People will come to be free, okay? They will come and they will get free from sickness, bondage, and they must have an understanding that you cannot work from your own flesh. It, you're, you must be spirit driven. It's the law of the spirit. Okay? Part of God's rich love and mercy for his people is the distribution of the Holy Spirit so that you're not operating in your own will and through your own flesh because it leads to destruction. The people that are getting freed must have an understanding of not only just repentance and going to heaven, but to keep themselves pure, to really walk in Christ, they need to have an understanding of the law of the Spirit. Once a person is born again and born of the Spirit of God, they should innately have an unction in a pool to walk by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. If they are truly saved and that Holy Spirit deposit has been dumped in a person, they innately want to seek and become God chasers. A true Holy Spirit, okay, person filled. Holy Spirit filled person. Spiritual law is in Psalms 141.3. I want to repeat this for you because this verse is so mighty, so important, so effective. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord, keep watch over the door of my lips. David is basically setting a watchman at the gate of his lips. If you remember a couple years ago when I started this ministry, we talked about the various gateways into your soul and spirit, man, that ride through your eyes, your ears, your mouth, and your nose. And we cleared and cleansed, and we did a cleansing stream purification process for about eight months. I want to remind you of that place that we were eight months ago, that your mouth is a mighty door. It is a mighty gateway to the enemy for him to use your vessel for the benefit of his kingdom. That's why it's so important that at the end of the day, you come boldly before the throne room of the Lord and you ask him to examine you and examine your day and repent because none of us are perfect we are made in the image of Christ he's calling you into holiness into purity and you have the benefit that the Old Testament people did not have you have you are a beneficiary an heir of the Lord and you have a benefit of repentance every lick of the day every second of the day and the Bible says that Jesus wipes the slate clean and he never brings it up again. Why would we carry any form of sin nature to bed with us? Okay, we should be falling asleep in our purest form simply because of the finished work of the cross. Again, he set up watchmen at the door of, of, of his lips. Keep watch over the door of my lips is what he said, he said, Lord, put a guard over my mouth. How many of us need to do this? This is so important because 
if you go into a region to to perform deliverance or or into a home or into a family um you you have to remember that you are there through love and not through anger not through resentment many people will want to change the other person because they're they're angry with them or they're angry at the situation and so they arrive with the foundation of revenge i see it in churches and i see it in pastors and apostles and people that are preaching and teaching and they're teaching from a place of revenge and anger instead of a place of shalom peace okay what does the book of ephesians says the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness you know um, your shield of faith shod my feet with the gospel of peace. Okay, your arrival on the scene and any circumstance for deliverance and even salvations comes centered, centered in love and in peace, not fear for the person. Okay, Jesus does all the work, you are just a vessel who speaks. If you speak on behalf of the enemy and you say angry words and angry things, those words are released and the enemy is able to build a case file against that person. And as you go to deliver a territory or deliver a region or a person or a home, because you've built a case against them, your deliverance will be null and void. Okay? You must come with a pure heart. Once you do that and you leave the area, you leave the territory, let's say that you've prayed for your parents or you've prayed for your cousin to, to um, come into salvation or your friends and you leave and you have a conversation with somebody else. And in your conversation, you say these words, well, I hope that my mom comes to Christ. Well, I hope that my cousins stop doing drugs. Now you say this following the fact that you prayed in faith that God will deliver them. It's the prayer said in faith that heals the sick. It's the prayer said in faith that offers deliverance. When this is done, know that you built a case opposite of what you began. You now debunked what you started. Okay? And so I want to bring this truth to you so that you remain and you understand your words that you think before you speak. You speak from the heart of God, not from a place of emotion. That is dangerous territory. Jesus spoke only when God told him. He only said what the Father told him to say. So you never speak in a place of when you are not right. When you are not right, you do not... You, you pull back, you go back in prayer. Um, even if you're confronted with somebody and you want to speak something out of anger or you want to speak something out of a different position that you know that God didn't say or tell you to speak, you simply say, you know what? I have to refrain from this conversation. Well, I'll get back to you later. I'm not in a good place. Just be honest, okay? Anyway, Genesis 1, verses 1 through 3, page 59 in your book. Listen, listen, this is God, the power of God's voice. God's voice set the world and all of creation into motion. His voice, His words. Now, listen to this. Listen, God lives in you. Come on. God lives in you. Now, your words set the world in motion the kingdom the kingdom responds to the words of a christian because god lives in you he speaks through you okay listen genesis 1 1 through 3 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth god created heavens and earth was formless and void and darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters then God 
said. Notice in that verse that he was hovering over darkness, over the surface of the deep. His spirit hovering over the deep. He's about to bring order to confusion and chaos that reside in the ocean's deep. Everything has a time. Listen, everything has a time, has a place, has an order. All that God has created has perfect and proper place and order. Everything. With this in mind, we have a concept of order in spiritual law. Okay? In the unseen world, there is order. Okay? Your words are put in that order. Okay? They can bring destruction okay they can bring healing to a land but it's up to you how you distribute these words page 60 know the goal of the enemy is to breach that divine order and create confusion he is the accuser of the brethren he is everything opposite that jesus stands for he's everything opposite that the holy spirit and god stand for he's the accuser of the brethren he will steal your promises from you. He will make accusations in your mind. He will make you think that the promises of God aren't for you. He will make you think that you're not free and you're not delivered. He will make you think you're sick when you're actually not. He will put burdens on your heart thinking that they can't be removed. He's a liar. Any thought that you get from the accuser of the brethren that you know isn't from God because he is love, he is peace, he wraps his arms around you every single day, he loves on you so much, he gave you a piece of him, he gave you a piece of him to operate on earth and the enemy hates it because he doesn't have an ounce of the father in him and you carry everything that he desires so all day long he tries to accuse he's the accuser of the brethren accuse you of everything make you think people are mad at you make you think you're not wanted in churches make you think you can't be part of a group part of a sport part of a job make you think that you need to remain in poverty poor no money none of that is from the Lord read your Bible in the Old Testament when he first delivers his people out of Egypt he showers them in beautiful jewelry attire um, they had everything and when you read that you see God's true divine heart for his people okay he wants you living in a place of victory in a place of love and surrender holiness be holy as i am holy so the goal of the enemy is to breach divine order and create confusion so when you know that when confusion comes you know what to do you go to the lord in prayer and you raise your hand up and you say in the mighty name of jesus I claim my territory, I claim my land, I claim my home, I claim my family, I claim my friends, I claim my church, I claim Salt of the Earth Ministries, I claim Oasis Group, in the mighty name of Jesus, and I command divine order, divine structure as God ordained, anything from the enemy that is creating or disorder and chaos, I ask you, Lord, I ask you, Lord, to have your way with them. Create chaos in their camp and send them back to hell in Jesus' name. When you do that, I promise you, do it. Do it when you first rise in the morning. Stand up from your bed and say, Lord, I glorify you. I honor you. Create chaos in the enemy's camp today. Create devastation and destruction in his camp. In Jesus' name, I command every enemy that is after me and my family and my friends and my church go now do you know they have to listen they ha it's spiritual law again life and death are in power so when you speak life trust me you have angels on assignment in the book of hebrews it talks about ministering angels they are specifically waiting to be released they are 
excited when you release the power of a word because these angels get released and they get to carry it out. We talked about that yesterday when Daniel was in prayer and Gabriel, the archangel, came swiftly to Daniel and said, as soon as your words went out, I was sent to you to tell you why Jerusalem must go through what they're going to go through. Okay, so trust me, okay? Trust the word of the Lord that your words are powerful. Example, Revelation, page 60, Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down, and he accuses them before our God day and night. The accuser of the brethren is the devil, and he has been thrown down, and it says that he accuses them, that's us, we're the brethren, day and night. How many of you have him show up in your dreams? Okay, he shows up in your dreams. Well, guess what? Evict him. Give him an eviction notice. Your words bring life and death to yourself too, not just the people around you. Command it so for him to leave your dream world. If he's not leaving you and you're having other things that are going on and happening, you know, consult me or somebody in our ministry through our website. Okay, maybe you need delivered from something. You know, people have spirits that come to them in their dreams that this sounds, you know, gross, but this is a pretty sound group, a pretty sound, you know, broadcast. We go pretty deep. This is for the hungry and thirsty, but they have demons that send people that want to have sex with them in their dream. And if that's happening to you, that's a deliverance ministry, friend. Okay, if you are praying and that's not leaving, then you need delivered because you are still soul, soul tied to something that, that needs broke by, by an anointing. Okay, and so anyway, the accuser of the brethren does it day and night. Okay, all day long he'll accuse you if you allow him. All right. The enemy, don't, don't think he doesn't understand this. He knows, he knows spiritual law. He knows the legalities. Yes, God is good. Speak it, sister. Come on, Michelle, bring it. You guys are funny. Hi, hi, Daisy Pearl. Speak truth. Man, I just feel, amen. Okay. God's kingdom Okay, we've talked about the kingdom realm, but it off operates through covenants and through law. Okay, it's a legalized system. Deliverance in a region or in a person, it's a process of broken covenants and spiritual laws and evil covenants. Not just broken covenants with the Lord, but covenants that people have made um, that they don't even realize what those covenants are tied to. I'm telling you, we've seen lots of deliverance with sororities because people don't understand the origin of the sorority and they get in these sororities even on college campus and they speak a covenant binding agreement. No matter how harmless that, me that sounds, the Bible says that God is a jealous God and you are not to make covenant with nothing other than your wife and your God or your husband and your God. Those are the only covenants in the Bible. Everything else does damage. You might not think it, but it's there. It's biblical, okay? And so um, laws and evil covenants, the chief attribute is the power of words because you have made an agreement, okay? Whether you were even in Freemasons or you made an exchange with a tarot card reader and you exchanged currency and you made an agreement to go see this tarot card reader, um, there are things that happen in the kingdom. You know, once a person, let me tell you, once you go to a tarot card reader and those spirits arise and they're around in the room, they then leave and they follow you out and they make sure that the things that the tarot card reader spoke happen. 
you could have gone to a reader 20 years ago and you still have those demons around you and you need free okay so it's very very important binding agreements of any kind but we all get stuck right we all get stuck in like human activity okay we all get stuck in this this grind and this process out in the world and we begin to forget the unseen realm because we're living in the seen realm right god knows this he watched it happen in the old testament over and over and over again and without the new covenant in christ jesus okay grace and redemption are now provided and in an instant in an instant you are free i don't care how many times you can get free from anything at any time page 61 when the gospel is preached your spiritual ears hear it and faith arises right when you read the word of god it brings faith not only when you read it when you it says when you hear it why because your ear gates are now getting cleansed think of the mouth gate that we talked about when david put a watchman at the door of his mouth okay now your ear gates to clean your ear gates to clean what you hear every day the garbage that you're hearing that people should leave in their own homes, but they bring it out in the world and they spew it over everybody. The garbage on TV news, the garbage just in the grocery stores, and when you go shop in the music, whatever. You must come to a place of spirituality. Listen, you can know the holy word inside and out and not be spiritual. And, and, and that's a waste. It's such a waste to not use the Holy Spirit who is grieving inside of you to be used. You have to come to a place where you're not just reading the word of the Lord, but you're hearing it. God says hearing the word builds faith. He didn't say reading it. There is something about hearing it that cleanses those ear gates and drives the enemy's seeds that he tries to plant out okay hearing the word of the lord is important when you read your bible read it out loud so there's a distrip a, a dis <laughs> distribution of the holy spirit's words in the air okay and then into you your faith arises in your heart and then god's kingdom comes and takes residence inside you and then authority lives and grows that's how it works that's how it works i will fall asleep with my earbuds in to my bible app almost all the time i'm falling asleep to the words of the lord there's even music on youtube and in the background of the music they're reading scriptures to soft music okay I want that embedded in my conscience to drop in my heart so the Holy Spirit can then use it and do time amen because he lives in you you are heirs of the God Most High in the past he told his people to write his promises to write the word of the Lord um, on their on their heads and the Jews some of the Jews to this day they they have these little devices mounted on their heads with scripture okay God says with the Holy Spirit that the words are now written on the tablet of your heart it's called a tablet on the tablet of your heart and so we're going to read Jeremiah 31 33 this is page 62 in your book okay page 62 in your book Jeremiah 31 it says behold the days are coming declares the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel that's you okay this is your new covenant you are considered the house of Israel and with the house of Judah but this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days declares my Lord I will put my law within them and on their heart I will write it and I will be their God and they shall be my people friends listen listen to what's happening get this pay attention he wrote the law on your heart 
Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about tearing down evil alders. We're talking about legalities, kingdoms, and courtrooms. If you carry the law, <laughs> guess what else you carry? Authority. If you carry the law, you carry authority. He wrote the law in your heart. Guess what? The Holy Spirit, God lives in you with this law. And it says, the prayer offered in faith of a righteous man avails much. When your hand stretches out, stretches out to heal the sick, it is spiritual law that if you are in a place of righteous, right standing, okay, it says prayer offered by the righteous avails much. It's just what it says. The person should be getting healed in the name of Jesus. It's spiritual law. I want you to understand spiritual, spiritual law. What we just read in Jeremiah was Jeremiah 33, 31 and 33. Now listen to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 through 18. This is page 62 in your book. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. Listen, how beautiful. This is New Testament. First, we read Jeremiah, Old Testament prophecy that happened 800 years before Christ comes. This prophet writes that, Jesus, that this man's going to come and instill a law into us. Now in the New Testament, it says, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will imprint my laws upon their heart and on their mind. I will inscribe them. I will inscribe them. Which means producing an inward change. He then says, And their sins and their lawless acts I will remember no more because of repentance. Now where there is absolute forgiveness and complete cancellation of the penalty of these things, which is our sin, there is no longer any offering to be made to atone for sin. Why is this so important to know? You should memorize these two scriptures, maybe have my note cards in your car, because when someone gets saved, when a region gets saved, when a person gets saved, these are things that they need to know that they can carry and house. Many people are getting saved, but they're not getting changed. And I gotta wonder if they're saved because my Bible tells me right here that a true person that is saved, there's a heart factor. There's a, there's a factor of compassion. There's a factor of love. There's a factor of lawlessness. Amen? Okay. Hope you're a husband. Thank you. Yes, we are, Adrian. We are strong and well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is a radical departure from what happened in the Old Covenant, now taking place in the New Covenant. God was unable to write on their heart in the Old Testament due to the sinful nature of man that only Jesus at the cross could provide a release from. Page 63. Listen, this is so sad. God is desiring a willing vessel that will hold and house his love. Not just hold and house salvation. He desires a willing vessel. The fact that our sins are always pushed away is an entirely different way of living than they lived in the Old Testament. His spirit living inside you creates transformation and regions. The voice of God is no longer external. Listen, the voice of God is no longer external, but it's internal because it's housed in your new nature. Listen, the voice of God is internal because it's housed in your new nature. He needs a willing vessel. He needs you to understand that he lives inside you that you carry the law, that you are the judge in the high court. You carry the law and you need to disperse the words and release 
to people in regions and homes and in territories. 2 Corinthians 4.13 Yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had who wrote the scripture, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we also speak. Listen, 2 Corinthians 4.13 it says, I believed, therefore I spoke. What did we read in Genesis? God spoke the word, the world into motion. He spoke everything into order. Now God speaks through you. You believe, therefore you speak. At 2 Corinthians 4.13. Many people aren't speaking because truly down deep in their heart, they're not believing. Okay? And if that is you, I want to pray with you tonight, okay? I want to instill a prayer, okay, with you for belief, okay? I command in the name of Jesus that faith arise, that faith arise in the people that are watching this broadcast. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command faith to arise in Jesus' name, to faith arise and shoot up shoot up through your bones i command in the name of jesus that dead bones rise up like the power of elijah that dead bones rise up i command the fleshiness of man right now to die in the name of jesus and the holy spirit take residence and precedence in your life in the mighty name of jesus 2 Corinthians 4.13, it said, Yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had, who wrote the scripture, I believed before they spoke. Notice the spirit of faith is established in your heart, which causes you to speak. The connection between your minds and your mouth, your gateways. Remember, through your heart flow the rivers of life. If your heart is not right life will not flow through your heart and out your mouth remember keep your gates clean keep your gateway to your mouth clean the gateway to your ears to your heart to what you're seeing the words the most powerful tool given to you from jesus the holy spirit in you are those words page 64 those words God uses you as an instrument to distribute his creative power. You believe, then you speak. Many people aren't there yet. But as your mind is renewed by the transformation of the word of God, you then will align with the will of the Father. Transformation must happen by a renewed mind. To have a desire and a heart for, for God's people. Many people only care enough for their family, friends, neighbors. God is bigger than that. He says, I desire more for my church. He desires more from his church. You must renew your mind and begin to align with the will of God. And then your mouths will change. Your heart will change. You will start to become more aware of the prophetic nature of God and the ability of him to work through you speaking. We talked about this in the beginning of the video. I want to reiterate, do not speak from a place of emotion without praying first. It's dangerous. Especially when you are walking really, really close with the Lord. You, you must go to prayer for it first. It is a trap, especially for prophetic people in particular. There is an anointing on those words. God touches the mouths of prophetic people. Okay, through the power of the Holy Spirit, he intends to use those words to release his kingdom on earth. Do not misuse, misrepresent, misrepresent the Holy Spirit or the Lord by making a mistake and speaking things that you shouldn't say. Don't waste your anointing on frivolous words that weren't meant to come out and be spoken that actually cause death and, and evil altars being built. Do not misuse your anointing. 
always speak from a place of God's promises and never doubt or have unbelief. Transformation. Amen. Yes, Mary Jane. How are you? Nice to see you. Page 65. <laughs> Page 65, he is talking about the ability to, to speak no matter what it looks like, no matter what people say. You will stand in opposition to the hand of the enemy and speak the will of God into earth. Who cares if you look crazy? This is a sentence that, that he put in the book. I can tell you that... Um, my husband and I were on vacation. We were at the beach and I looked at my husband and I said, I just want to scream Jesus over these waters. And he said, we'll do it. And I did. And it felt so good. It was just such a release to put my arms up and just holler, Jesus! And honestly, who cares? Amen? Who cares? It was so awesome. And so, but the accuser of the brethren wants to come to you and say, you look ridiculous. Don't do that. Everybody's going to look at you. Identify those evil voices and shut them down. Follow through with God's desire to release his kingdom in the name of Jesus. Okay, the power of agreement, page 65, is going to be part three. The power of agreement. We're going to pick up with that, I think, Friday night. Okay, so we're going to keep this going. I'm going to get you guys through this book, okay? Um, tomorrow night, we meet in person. Um, if it snows and we don't, then I'm going to be on this broadcast tomorrow night, releasing part three, The Power of Agreement. I'm hoping to see you guys. Everybody that's on this broadcast is always invited here on Thursday night, okay? So... Um, I praise God over you, that you praise Him in the morning, you praise Him in the evening before bed, ask Him in the evening for repentance, do Holy Communion, break bread with Him, be intimate with the Holy Spirit, and I promise you will see great strides, great strides. Amen? I'll see you guys in the next day or so. Bye-bye.